I don't think I failed the test before because you know danger. like what is it that you think that they must know and they must have as an engineering student experience and all that but as an engineer you can literally work anywhere hello, uh, hello hello guys uh, welcome back to gift uh, varsity uh, this is your host gift uh, bozekana uh, thank you for coming up again and watching uh, this great uh, interview that is going to happen here right now don't forget to like this video so that more students can get an access to this video and YouTube will recommend it to them. Uh, today I have a special guest next to me. Uh, can you introduce yourself? I'm Anand Nair. I'm a master's student in um, the electrical engineering department. I actually did my undergrad in mechanical engineering. I just happened to um, end up in this department because of my research. So, cool. So you, you started with mechanical engineering. So. Let's take it back from high school. Like, uh, which stream did you do in high school? Which high school? Um, so, um, I did. I was in high school in a small town called Matati Ele. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah. It's, it's like in the. It's in Eastern Cape, like on the border by KZN. It's a pretty, pretty small high school. It's like. Uh, so it's in a small town, so everyone knows everyone. It's like coming to UCT is kind of like a big jump because like it's completely different, and there's just a bigger like diversity of people mm. there's kind of a big jump yeah all right so you you did uh which subject there in high school uh so you know the usual <laughs> physics maths i also did geography and egd oh, so yeah okay. that was pretty fun <laughs> i always enjoyed drawing over i think that the choices we had in high school was between egd and biology and i was absolutely not interested in studying all those biological things so egd was just a natural choice for me so like i always had an affinity for like you know engineering stuff oh, wow, wow, wow. so in high school you never thought of maybe when you finish high school doing something related to medicine or stuff you all, always wanted to do engineering yeah medicine is out of the table <laughs> early on I, I think i decided early on i wasn't interested in medicine like yeah I'm a big fan of cars, so engin engineering seems like the natural choice. But yeah. All right, all right. So you did. You completed your metric. Uh, you, which university did you apply to? Do you apply? Did you apply to UCT alone, or is there other universities that you wanted to study in? I actually applied like to four universities, but UCT was always my first choice. Yeah. <laughs> so which which are those? Uh, I I think it is Wits, Stellenbosch, and UJ. Yeah, and also UCT. So as soon as I got accepted here, like this was a choice. <laughs> yeah, and always wanted to yeah. be at UCT, right? All right. Um, now you got into. Uh, did you only apply for mechanical engineering here? Um, I also applied for electrical engineering. Just funny because I'm in the electrical department now. Yeah. And I think in UJ, I applied for aeronautical engineering. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Yeah. That's the only place in South Africa that has aeronautical. Oh, okay. That's so, yeah. okay. Okay. So you applied for aeronautical. What sparked the, the idea of aeronautical engineering in you? You know, it's like... Have you ever thought about how like an aeroplane flies? It's, yeah. it's not a very in, intuitive thing. It's kind of exciting. So I thought like aeronautical would be interesting. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Let me try. But then uh, UCT accepted you for mechanical. Then you started your first year here at UCT. So how was your first year experience now at University of Cape Town? Uh, you know how first year goes. <laughs> it's always rough. You, you don't know what you're doing. You're still figuring things out and just getting like a, you know, there's always like the the, the shock from high school because in high school, everything is I guess spoon fed to you <laughs> and it's kind of different in university but yeah f first year is always like a learning experience like you you figure out what works for you you figure out um you you make your friends and you work together and get through everything so yeah it's kind of like just a learning experience it's only by second year where you've got everything figured out <laughs> sometimes i guess yeah all right so now uh during your first year like, is there a time whereby maybe you failed a test? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say a test, but the, yeah, no, I don't think I failed a test before because, you know, dude, uh, high school puts kind of a pressure on you to, you, you, you 
get like a mindset where you have to like perform in everything the failing a test is like kind of like <laughs> you, you can't do that <laughs> and plus i was also pressured because i had a scholarship so there's always a fear of losing it if i failed any subject so i always like push myself to how, try how did you do that like what are the secrets behind like oh yeah that probably someone who's in first year now they're watching they are afraid of failing also that will end up losing them funding or scholarship like wh- what are the methods that you use to survive your first year there's this saying i heard from somewhere on the internet that uh, everything is figure outable so even if you don't understand it in the lecture like youtube's a big resource you can find everything online so there's lots of like videos and stuff that explain things in many different ways if you put the effort <laughs> you can just you can even like do like questions in textbooks which like frankly I never did because t- like honestly the slides had everything you needed textbooks were just like supplementary but yeah like you can learn you can figure out anything from the internet you just need to like spend some time and to process everything yeah oh well so you need to expand your knowledge and get some more resources yeah. from youtube guys and yeah. other yeah. <laughs> all yeah. I on youtube right now yeah. <laughs> everything's on youtube yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no. after <laughs> this video make sure that you save some content on what you're studying okay right so uh you did your second year right uh third year like oh, yeah interesting yeah. thing about third year yeah. like from third year on because because of covid all our stuff is online So like I pro- only properly experienced a university life for 2 years and then the second half of my degree was completely online because of covid except 2021 like it is half online half on campus so it's kind of weird like yeah we had a kind of a crazy <laughs> university career cuz like thinking back on it every year there's always a crisis in 2018 when I had my first year it is uh it is drought so we had like water restrictions In this in the second year there's like some protests um happening also we had the Uyunene incident which is like terrible and the campus shut down in 2020 <laughs> the whole like we we like sent back home because of covid and 2021 we had the fire at campus so like every year there's always a crazy incident wow oh, it's quite exciting yeah, but <laughs> you remain resilient throughout right? yeah okay I saw uh, that you once got the uh, uh, dean's you were in the dean's very oh, yeah. list you which year was that uh it is for first year and second year huh? yeah huh? yeah so yeah for those that don't know the dean's merits list is the top 15% which is yeah it's a big deal i guess of the whole faculty yeah oh, the whole cal- class or yeah i fa- think it's just the the class just like in mechanical engineering if you're in the top 15% then you like make the dean's list. Yeah. So okay, probably a great 12 learner is watching us now. They are currently wondering what is mechanical engineering all about, right? You know, yeah. What is all about? What's happening there in that field? If if I could break it down in the most simple way possible, uh mechanical engineering is basically Newton's law. <laughs> Everything is built around Newton's law. It's just about how things move how different objects interact with each other so if you want to like put put it in the real world like engineers basically solve problems so people clients come with the problem like oh we have this machine that's breaking and then we figure out why it's breaking like we look at the laws like newton's laws and we see uh we basically analyze the movement of basically the parts of the machine and see why it's not doing what it's supposed to do so we we build on the principles we learn which is basically Newton's law and we apply it to like the real world. Yeah. So uh it's another saying I got from the internet, find problems that you want to solve because <laughs> you'll always have problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So okay, yeah, you, you got to your final year, right? So like how, how, what was your final year project all about, right? Yeah. So that relates to why I'm doing my masters in the electrical department. Mm. So my final year project was um related to sea ice in Antarctica. So my project was to um basically use images and develop a code that can basically analyze the images and detect the size of all the ice floating in the in the ocean. Mm. So that's like related to this ongoing research effort in the Antarctic because Cape Town is one of five gateways to the Antarctic. 
So we, we have like a geographical advantage. So we should be one of the leaders in Antarctic research. So um, yeah, so my master's deals with um, computational fluid dynamics of uh, sea ice floating on waves. So that, that builds up on the research I did for my final year project. So yeah, that's... So now you're currently head like marine robotics and stuff? Oh yes. Uh, yeah, marine robotics is a research group of different students doing uh, research related to marine engineering and we applying like basically electrical engineering concepts. So we have uh, a underwater vehicle called the Sea Hog, which uh, uh, other students could tell you more about, but it's basically a UCT built underwater vehicle that's designed for like ship hull inspections and all of that. So like that, we have various other projects. Yeah. It's not that submissive for the one. Yeah. <laughs> the one that, yeah. oh, okay, 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 okay. Wow, that's really interesting. So, okay, so with engineering and someone who's in master's now, right? What uh, what other opportunities, like someone who probably studied, who is currently in engineering or those who are intending to study engineering have with this degree? Where can I work with engineering? So, um, yeah, see, like my master's, like the work I'm doing doesn't, it's like I'm building um, computational fluid dynamic skills. So it's all about the skills you make and where you can apply them. So think about engineering, it's not very clear cut, like probably medicine, like in medicine, if you're a doctor, oh, you get assigned to a ward and you build up experience and all that. But as an engineer, you can literally work anywhere. Even if you have a mechanical degree, you can work for a software development company as long as you built up the skills, the coding and programming stuff. So what you should do is just think about what you want to do and look at um, look at what skills people in that industry usually have and then just build those skills. So like I would, I'm interested in the automotive industry. So uh, I like I feel computational fluid dyma- dynamics could um, be really useful for me. So that's my master's project deals with a lot of that. So after this, I'm hopefully looking to <laughs> make a break in the automotive industry. We'll see. I'm going to be working on this. <laughs> how is uh, how can you describe UCT engineering? Like, like how has it uh, been, has been beneficial for you? You're studying engineering specifically at UCT. UCT. Well. I can't really answer that question because I don't know what studying engineering at WITS is <laughs> or any other university. How has it been? But... Okay. If, uh, these are the skills that I think. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So I guess doing any degree, you after you do the d- degree and you're done with it, you kind of forget like that you know everything because you, you feel like you don't know. Like when I started my master's, I because uh, starting a completely new thing, I kind of felt shell-shocked, I guess, because I felt like I didn't know anything <laughs> and I completely forgot all the skills I built up. And that, I think that happens to anyone who's entering the working world for the first time because everyone is daunted by um, all these requirements <laughs> that these job postings have and we kind of get intimidated and we don't acknowledge everything we learned, I guess. So I guess... Um, the past few years, I, I learned to, um, I guess, just put a mind on what, what I know. Y- you know what you know, and what you don't know, you can always learn. So I guess, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, before we close, uh, what is it that you think that each and every engineering student who's watching us currently, uh, mostly, uh, I know most of them are engineers, like, what is it that you think that they must know and they must have as an engineering student. I guess that, that will keep them going. I guess the biggest thing is uh, the ability to self-study. Because <laughs> you know, sometimes you have, um, you don't understand what happens in a lecture. And I guess the ability to learn things by yourself plays a big part in how well you can succeed. Because like when you get put into the industry, like they, they won't hold your hand. If, if you need to learn new skills, you have to pick them up. <laughs> like as you work so yeah the ability, the ability to self-study that's a big one and also another thing transferable skills 
you need to build transferable skills so that you could work, apply your skills in different contexts. Yeah, that's something I learned from another lecturer. Yeah. <laughs> Any advice for someone who's in high school now as you are closing? Mm. Advice. <laughs> <laughs> advice. Yeah, some of them are currently writing, some of them they yeah. next month they'll be studying their final exam. Well, any last words of advice? Well, I guess I can just say the general thing. <laughs> Try your best, never give up. And uh, I, I said this before, but I stand by. It's kind of like one of my morals or mottos that everything is figure outable. Like even if it feels like it's impossible to understand, it's figure outable. You just need to like look at it from a different angle. Yeah. Guys, everything is figure outable. Uh, you can figure out everything, guys. Wow, wow, wow. That's great indeed. Uh, thank you so much for having me on our channel, Give Diversity TV. Uh, yeah, yeah. You are really. You're going, this video might get million views, you know. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, let's hope indeed uh, you got inspired and you realize that it's very, very possible to achieve everything that you want to achieve. But it's up to you to decide, right? Because it's, as always say that every accomplishment starts with the decision to try. So it's up to you. Down to me. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. Okay.